powered by the law office of Theodore London. I love the way it flows. I love the way it grows. There's something in this sound that takes me far. It's like a special song. I can move my mood along. But I cannot say you'll hit through my guitar. She told me at the bass line. Again, can only mean one thing. <coughs> we are being joined by our good friend and partner, Mr. Attorney Ted Theodore London. How are you, Attorney good sir? London? Happy, hey, Mr. Happy Thursday yeah. to you. You know what, uh, uh, Miss Hill and Mr. Tiba, thank you so very much for having me and allowing me to join you guys on this Thursday. I appreciate it so very much. You know, you got to tell us about the song selection of the week because Which, this is so happy. So I'm yeah, you know what, you know, what, Darlene, you know, I feel I love this song, by the way. But, you know, Darlene, I felt bad because this is not a black m- musician here. This guy's name is Tom Mish, M-I-S-C-H. It's a 2018 tune. Here's the good news, though. We didn't get to this part, but it does feature De La Soul on the back end of this of this nice. uh, song here, which is really, really, Very really nice. nice. The name of this tune is called It Runs Through Me. And again, it features uh, uh, De La Soul, uh, mm-hmm. Tom Mish, M-I-S-C-H. Really, really, really nice song. So this is more of a uh, Ted and Kelly driving song, if you will. So this is, again, from, from my personal uh, label, uh, I guess. You <laughs> I love it. Your playlist. Well, <laughs> well, I had never heard that song, Mr. London. You, you certainly yeah, you introduced know, me to that, so I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, uh, you know what? Go to YouTube and listen to it. Tom Mish, it runs through me. Really, really nice song. And then when De La Soul kicks in, and about maybe halfway through the song, man, it really gets kind of soulful. So even though this is not black music, at the beginning of the song actually turns to black music uh, halfway through it. So Absolutely. Well, thank you so much so, for joining us. So uh, let me just say this as well. I have, have to say hello to my beautiful wife, Kelly. She is yes. listening. And uh, you know what? I want to give a, uh, a special thanks to our assistant, Jada. Jada is our chief media executive in our office here, and I'm thanking her for curating our online wealth transfer series today. We have we do an online seminar every first Thursday, okay, uh, between uh, 10 a.m. and 12. I'm sorry, 11 o'clock to 12:30, and we had over 110 people register for the online series today. So if you didn't uh, weren't able to tune in today. You can actually call Jada at our office, 773-721-3333, and Jada will actually help you find it. But it's on Facebook, I think somewhere maybe on TikTok. I don't know exactly where it is. But you can always go to our Facebook, our TikTok, uh, Facebook for Ted London or the Law Office of Ted London. We have a TikTok somewhere on there, I guess, with my name associated with it. Uh, of course, we have a website, tedlondon.org. So I just wanted, really wanted to take take the opportunity to thank Jada today because she did a she did a great job with with the seminar. But also I have to say thanks to our other team members as well, Danielle, Tanya, Keisha. We have a really a great team here that's ready to assist all the callers and our clients. So when they come in, so it's not just Ted London handling the business. I guess we have a great team of professionals that's really really doing a great job, and so I'm I'm grateful for them as well. Love it because that you acknowledging uh, the the team behind the scene. Uh, because Ted London, attorney Ted London, can't do what he does for so many of us, so well, f- for many of your clients, without the team behind you. Well, hey, hey, uh, darling, actually, they're the team in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 no, I'm behind them. So they actually do a great job, and they make my job very, very easy, and I'm very, very grateful for them. We do have a great team. You know, and if some of the listeners actually ever go to our website or they just Google our reviews, Many of our, our five-star reviews are not as much about Ted London, but they're equally as much as about our, our team members. Uh, yeah. So so we do have a great team, and I am really, really grateful for that. So, Mr. Mr. London, what do we want to inform the good listeners of Chicago about today? 
Well, you know what, uh, Atiba and Darlene, I wasn't, I didn't have enough of what we talked about last week when we were talking about middle class uh, black families. Uh, you know, I, I think that again, uh, uh, we should be spending more time. I think elected officials should be should be spending more time locally, nationally, talking to middle class black folks. You know what, when when elected officials and politicians talk to white folks. Republicans, uh, white Democrats, you know what? They always are talking about middle class people. Typically, when they're ever talking to black folks, they're always talking about, I don't know how to frame it, Darlene and Tiba, what are, um, uh, uh, well, not, I, not our middle. Right, exactly. They, they're not really talking about, they're really talking about, uh, you know, some of our, our, our lower middle class families, can I say. But I think middle class black folks, people squarely in the middle, and even some of, some of you upper middle class black folks, really a lot of times the elected officials, they don't really spend a lot of attention uh, with us, and sometimes, or sometimes, I don't think middle class black folks give themselves enough credit, appreciation, and, and attention. So I think I just want to share some more information and encourage black people really to seek middle class. I, well, you know, uh, my premise last week, uh, Tiba, and you caught on this very, very well, was that, again, uh, society is, is trying to do the okie doke on black folks. And again, that is they are flashing this high lifestyle um, in front of us uh, via the lifestyle of some of these athletes who make millions and millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, and some of these athletes uh, and entertainers who do the same. And and uh, and they, it, it's almost to, to suggest that if you're not living this lifestyle, you're not really you're not really living a quality life. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's really insidious the way that they do this. You know, uh, uh, you know, with social media, television shows, everyone's on Facebook is is uh, uh, or, or fronting with Bentleys and the like, and people are, are on Facebook perpetually on vacations, and and again, you know, you're wondering how are they accomplishing all these things because they just show us the things, not really so much the how. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, to your point, I'm wondering how does everybody get to Dubai but me. <laughs> well, well, you know what, what, <laughs> and me, and Tiba, and, and Darlene. Let me tell you something. When you look at some of these shows, of some of these shows, some of these housewife shows, and some of these shows where people, the ladies are with fabulous diamonds, big cars, uh, worldwide travel, you'll see an abundance of these people now going to jail. Yes, you do. Some of them, the, uh, some of them are current artists. Well, m most and, recently, the woman yeah. out of uh, Salt Lake City, the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, who, of course, carrying all the Hermes handbags, designer handbags, wearing, like you said, all of the bling, but now she is going to jail because, of course, she got busted for fraud. Right. And there was another couple, Darlene, another white couple I see in the news. I, I never watched the program, but the husband and wife went to jail. There's, there's yeah, they had a, there's a TV another, show. The, the, they had a TV yeah. show. That's oh, the right. Christies. That's right. The Christies. That's right. There was yeah. another the lady South. I just saw. I just saw just a uh, couple of days ago. Where again, I think she's part of the Real House Housewives of Orange County series, the franchise there. I believe it is. But her husband is this big time lawyer, personal injury lawyer, and then he has now been indicted for stealing his client's money. Okay. To, to perpetuate this, 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 this over the top lifestyle. And so I think when black folks see this, I think we aspire to that. And I think sometimes we're missing out on really the high quality life that one can have if they are just middle class folks. Now, of course, some people are going to achieve, uh, uh, uh extreme success, uh, some, some, uh, some highly trained professionals, uh, black folks. Some uh, some highly successful business owners, black folks. Well, they may have have an even higher middle class standard, maybe even transcend to wealthy or rich status. But my position is, if we can just maintain a solid middle class standard of living, then black folks are going to do well. Well, let me ask but you this, Attorney London: yeah. How do how would you define middle class? Because the the definition has changed so much, especially with inflation, the economy, the way that it is. So, how would you describe? or define the black middle class? Well, you know what, uh, Darlene, good question, but the reality is there is an actual definition for a middle class. And, I, and, and believe it or not, most black folks are in the middle class. And, and please forgive me, I don't have the statistics in front of me, but I think for the family of, of four, in the range of 40,000 plus or so, 
brings you into the middle class in some, in some part of the continuum. So it's not a whole lot of money that really brings you in, in the middle class. I think one of the things that defines partially middle class is home ownership. Okay. Uh, because we, we know that home ownership is really the foundation for building wealth. And again, there is much conversation about wealth transfer in the black community. There's a lot of chatter on social media, uh, radio stations, uh, radio pundits. A lot of folks are talking about black wealth transfer, and really it all starts with home ownership. And so I would think that's one of the fundamentals for being middle class is black home ownership. You raise an excellent. No, one of the problems. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, please forgive me, T. But one of the problems with black home ownership is more and more young black folks are are um, are not moving towards black home ownership in the ages that typically black folks have been moving into home ownership in their early early thirties, uh, late twenties when they get married. And so there's actually a decline of black home ownership because young black folks aren't really interested in buying homes. I guess as much as they are not interested in buying cars. You know, I've never seen young black men not interested in driving and not having their licenses. When I was 15, 16 years old, boy, I would have killed for a license. These people are just content with calling Uber Lyft. So, but I think, they I sure think are. one of the, what, so, what the foundations And it was like, is, it was like, it was like independence for us when we were growing up. Like we you said, Attorney it. London, we couldn't loved wait well, me, to stop having our parents it. drop us off at school or at, you know, practice after school or something True. like that. But let me offer this, Attorney London, and I don't, don't want to get sidetracked. But one thing I think we have to consider in this conversation is the fact that the younger people that are coming out of college now don't have the same opportunities that their parents had. And that's part of the reason why you're seeing home ownership go down. As a matter of fact, that's part of the reason we, we see marriage even at lower rates because these kids are coming out of school so saddled with debt in a way that th- that the prior generations were not. Well, but let me ask you this, though, because there's a lot of research out there that shows that our kids could be doing much better than their parents. And that's why they're the, the middle class is kind of dwindling away. I because have, the I kids have are doing that. better. I mean, they they may not be going out to get their driver's license, but they come out of, come out of college a lot more savvy, and they're going on as be, and being entrepreneurs and and and, and starting on with jobs. I mean, think about it. How much did you come out? Of, what was your first job? What were you getting paid for for your first job, Attorney really? London? Yeah, go ahead. Or well, you, first, uh, my, uh, uh, my first job when I graduated from college, I worked at CBS Radio, uh, WBBM FM. I was an account executive. First job out of radio, uh, I mean, out of college. Listen, I want to just take the moment to thank Reverend Jesse Jackson uh, for that job because that was right about the time oh, nice. that that was right about the time that and I never I never said this to him, but I'm saying it now. That was the time that uh, uh, Operation Push was boycotting CBS, and I guess that. I, I was part of the benefit of that boycott, and they hired me. That was my first job out of college, nice. CBS Radio, making nineteen thousand dollars a year. So that was my first that's, job. That was like in nineteen. That was my. That was six. That I was. I came out of college back in the, look, the late eighties, and that was my first mm-hmm. job making. But now kids are coming out of college. I know it's a sign of the time. Of course, right. we're talking thirty, forty years later, but they're coming out making seventy, eighty thousand uh, dollars. One of my daughter's well, girlfriends got a job in Microsoft, making one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and she just graduated from Spelman College. So. Sure, but you know, Darlene, that's yeah. a good point. But here's here's the problem. She's she's an anomaly because most black college graduates are underemployed. And the reason why they're unemployed, there are a number of reasons, but one of the reasons is, again, black folks aren't getting government jobs anymore Mm -hmm. because, again, now more Hispanic people have some of the key leadership positions in some of these agencies, and they are hiring black folks. Uh, um, uh, We don't have uh, a Jesse Jackson right now who's on the front line for black young people to get employment, boycotting, picketing. That was successful. That worked. I'm, I mean, I am a beneficiary of those. There's no one boycotting these companies now, uh, and picketing these companies now, and so they are not. They are not as inclined to hire black folks. Here's another thing: you no, know, uh, black business owners hire black people. So when we, when the number of black businesses are, we have roughly 1.2 million black businesses in America. Of those 1.2 million black businesses, only about 100,000 of them have more than one employee. About so, 4, 4 or 5%. And that, and that four, has gone down precipitously because that used to be roughly 30% in the 60s and it. 70s. 
So, again, if we don't have black business, thank you, uh, thank you, Atiba. If we don't have black businesses hiring black young people, then, again, the black young people are underemployed. That's why we see many of them uh, driving Uber, which is okay, uh, 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 Uber food deliveries. Some of these folks have college degrees, but they can't get employed because, again, we don't have black people at the top in some of these positions anymore like we did during the 70s. We don't have Jesse Jackson doing what he did where he was extremely successful at getting a lot of black people jobs in the career path. And, and then the number of black businesses that have more than just one employee that is the owner themselves, again, the numbers, numbers are dwindling. Absolutely. I, I think that's, that's a great point. Um, because the, and the only reason I knew that information, Attorney London, just a couple of weeks ago in January, we had a conversation with Dr. Brooks Robinson uh, from blackeconomy.org blackeconomics.org and he he had done that work he had he had researched that and that was one of the points that he made that in the in the, in the late 60s 30 percent of black owned business could hire more than one person now sure. today it or in 2019 it was down to four percent got it and i'll tell you i respectfully the last time i researched it, it was less than it was less than four percent but wow. we're, we're not we're not we're not gonna, we're so not, not even that. that but right so then the, then the issue becomes, well, how, how do we get young people into the middle class? Because we do have a dwindling black middle class, particularly here in Chicago. People are moving out of Chicago. The black middle class is not really, uh, not really addressed directly. We hear a lot about homelessness, a lot about indigent people. Yes, they have needs for sure. But, you know, what? no one is really addressing the needs of middle class black folks. So, again, a lot of times young people, they don't even really know how do we move into the middle class. Well, again, I I do an informal survey at my office with our clients because our clients are middle class black folks. These are people who had government jobs, police officers, postal workers, uh, uh, bus operators, uh, work for city, county, state, federal government. They have pensions. And so really, I think where it starts to get into the middle class, aside from home ownership, darling, is people have to have long work careers. Because again, now people are changing jobs every 12, 18, 24 months if they stay at the jobs that long. So you don't really get a whole lot of stability. And additionally, when those jobs aren't offering pensions like they did, it makes it even more difficult to move into the middle class. Uh, I think you have to start uh, saving and investing as young as possible. There's really no one talking to young black folks about saving and investing. What are we doing with all that money, young black folks? iPhones, uh, blingy mm-hmm. things, and no one nice really cars, about nice investing. handbags, things nice like cars. that. Right? Yeah, someone should be really putting a, a full stop to that and saying, listen, you have to save and invest. Th- there's time for that. Uh, hey, Darlene, uh, this was the point that we touched on going out of the legal line uh, last mm-hmm. week, and that is the fact that I see, uh, not exclusively, but if couples can get married and stay married, that seems to be a good factor that's going to indicate whether or not someone's going to move into being solidly middle class. Now, again, uh, uh, Kelly uh, used to share with me before we got married uh, was that God blesses couples. And so I've kind of adopted that. I've <laughs> and I remember, that. remember, and I snapped back at you and said, he blesses you know, well, sing, single well, sisters too, he, single men and women too. too. There's, there's no doubt a single, uh, single women, single men. Yes, God blesses those too. But there is still something special about a married couple. And would they work oh, together, raise their children, uh, buy homes, uh, save their money, accumulate money? That's going to really be a solid foundation for moving, for moving to the middle class. And then one last thing that we don't really talk about too much directly, I talk about it indirectly with the estate planning part is, you know what, you know, you have to be able to leave your family, your children, your grandchildren something. Mm -hmm. That is really what the whole wealth transfer is about. You have to have homes to leave to your children. Listen, I was watching uh, some program and uh, um, it was a third generation living in the same home. It was a grandparents' home that went to the parents. Now the grandchild was married, living in the home. Boy, that home's been paid for for 50 years. Yes, That's yes. nothing but an opportunity to accumulate money. You know what? We have to do better with making sure that we have sufficient life insurance. And someone has to tell young people that you have to get it younger than older because the older you get, the more costly and prohibitive it becomes. So. These are just some things we have to be telling young people to make sure that we're growing our black middle class and, and stabilizing our black middle class as well. Well, as usual, attorney, you got the phone lines there. 
<laughs> Let's talk. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we want to take James on line one. Thanks, James, for calling. What's your question or comment? This is not our land. It won't be our land if we are here another 400 years. There's always going to be a few slaves with a few dollars. But there will not be no independence and self-determination in the land of the slave master. And we do not want to face that. And that's why this terror on us is going to keep increasing until the final explosion. Thank you for your call, James. And, and well, uh, we you know what? I, I, I like to address that. I humbly disagree with Mr. James. The fact is, we do have an opportunity to have self determination. You know how we do that? Is and a lot of times we act like we don't know that we spend our money and we invest our money with black businesses. That's how we do it. Listen, if we just if we had black lawyers, black doctors, black business owners, black shoe stores. Of course, we have black barbers and black hairstylists, but and our black dentists, black financial planners, black accountants, black real estate brokers, mm-hmm. black schools. Listen, do we even have any black schools? All the teachers we have, are there any black schools out here? I mean, talking about black-owned, we have a lot of daycares, but are there any black schools? Now, now yes, yeah, so there is a space for black determination in America, but mm-hmm. again, we, do, we have to do the work. Absolutely, and I appreciate you putting that in perspective, Attorney. Uh, Natasha, thank you for calling. What's your question? You're, you're oh. on with Attorney London. Hi, Attorney London. I'm going to keep this brief. I was recently married last year. My husband had a building before we got married from 2010. <clears throat> we recently, um, he was going to sell it. I told him to keep it because it's two minutes from the where the Obama Center is going to be, be at. I told him to keep it. I've invested 70000 and he's invested 70000 to remodel it. Now he says he wants to leave it to his son, which is my stepson. Is that the fair way it should be divided up? Because he said um, that he wants to leave it to his son. Uh, he's going to refinance, and I'm going to get my money back that I invested. But I just didn't know by me being a spouse now, would that be a fair way for him to divide it up? His son is already part owner of our life insurance plans. He is a part beneficiary of our of his life insurance and his um Natasha, work. do you have any children of your own? Or do you ha- you I guys have any kids I together? Have my own as well. I have no we have no children together. I have an adult child as well. Okay. And my daughter well, that's is a- attorney London? Have well, at it. Let me hear your answer to this. You know one. what? And it's a somewhat complicated question because you know what? With my, we see these issues in our in our office regularly, and I really try to be balanced. Part of it is he owned the building for at least a decade, a decade uh, before you were married. You have invested some money in the building. My inclination is, if you refinance the building, if you get your money back, perhaps even with some interest. I, my general inclination, again, it's, it's all family specific, specific. But my general inclination would be: once you get your money back, then then he's probably free to do what he wants to do with it because he did own the building before you. Do you guys live in the building? She, she, sorry, she's she's no longer with us. Well, but. And then again, uh, secondly, if she if they don't live in the building, she does not have any homestead rights, so she can, in fact, she can, in fact, be excluded from being entitled to the building. Now, they're married, and they're having a conversation like this. Now, didn't you just say, Attorney London, that, that couples build wealth well together? <laughs> well, that's true, but sometimes we have mixed and blended families. Absolutely, and that yes. Be, that has to be managed as well, so you can't just take it for granted. Sounds like they're having the discussion. Sounds like they're both reasonable because she's going to get her money back, and I think it's probably going to be a win-win for that family. It sounds sure. like it. Thank you for that one answer. One quick call. Mike, we want to get you in before we go. You're on with Attorney London. Uh, yes, I agree 100% with Attorney London, and I champion him and uh, reach out to him to, to establish a program of his own for 30 minutes talking about building wealth and black wealth. And one thing I want to say, I benefit from some wealth that somebody I never knew, my great-great-grandfather, relating to some land. So we need to talk about those things. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, call. Mike. Turn Mike, right in. You, you have so the much. last word. Well, you know what? Again, WVO and listeners are so smart. Yes, they sometimes are. We just, sometimes we just need to kind of focus them. So I'm going to take the opportunity on the legal lines on a weekly basis, really, to share some information, to try to encourage some people, to try to, some people even kick in the butt a little bit. And, uh, and so we can increase our middle class, uh, class in Chicago and really, and really nationally as well. 
I loved your answer today. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure talking to you and, of course, it's getting you and getting your song of the day. Hello, Kelly. <laughs> yes, indeed, Kelly. Thank you. Yeah. I can see her waving, uh, Darlene. <laughs> a good deal. Thank you so much and have yourself Thank a great you weekend. So we appreciate indeed. you. Thank you, attorney. Thank you. Yeah. Did you know Attorney Ted London handles injury cases? Whether it's a car crash, truck crash, nursing home abuse, or neglect case, including bed sore cases, Attorney Ted London can represent you and your family. Attorney Ted London has helped collect millions for his clients and can help you too. When you need injury law done, call Attorney Ted London, 773-721-3333. That's 773-721-3333. Seven seven three seven two one thirty three thirty three.